David Leitch wants a shot at the MCU's Blade reboot. That is the headline on this week's MBE Heroes. Yes, Stephen, the director himself has come out. It doesn't actually say who he was speaking to, but he did go on to say that Mahershala is such a great actor. I've been fortunate to work with some great actors, and I never go wrong that way. Having him play that role is a big deal, and I would be really excited, uh, and it would and would be really exciting. I can't even yeah. speak here. I'm that excited yeah. about it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I would love to have that conversation, he's essentially said. Now, Stephen... This is also the guy who was responsible, as you did say, for directing Deadpool 2. I think yeah. he also done Hobbs and Shaw, which you have seen. Yes. I yeah. haven't yet yep. seen it. So this is a guy who's well-versed in the action genre, and he's well-versed in the Blade sort of a yep. family as well. He stunt worked as a stunt yeah. coordinator yeah. on the original 98 Blade movie yeah. alongside Wesley Snipes. So this is a guy who has a fondness for the character, for the story, and he can do great action. And I think he's a great director. I really enjoyed Deadpool too. So is this yeah. something you yeah. would be on board for? Would you like to see him getting the green light from I think so, Marvel John. Disney? I think um, if they're going down the road of action, then I think this is the right man. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to see an article as well, John, that um, he's, he's got a few projects, obviously, uh, he's working on just now. But um, mm -hmm. because Blade, uh, this reboot, isn't going to be um, getting involved with the MCU till Phase 5, the window of opportunity is there for David Leitch to take the reins for this franchise. Um, yes, I think because of um, Deadpool 2, I think, is a better film than the, the original Deadpool yeah, film. Yeah, and I don't think well. they could top it because Deadpool, the original movie, was terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, Hobson Shaw as well took me by surprise. I'm not a big fan, as you know, John, of the Fast and the Furious franchise. No. But what he did with that, and certainly the... The action in that film alone is more comedic. It doesn't yeah. take itself serious. Um, so um, on that basis, and more so on the fact that he's actually worked on the Blade franchise previously with Wesley Snipes, although it was stunt coordinator, this is obviously where he gets his sort of action, um, you know... Uh, he's rich, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to um, shoot a good action movie and sequences and stuff yeah, like does, that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think um, this is a good um, a good pitch. I don't actually know uh, who David Leach is actually speaking to here, but yeah, it doesn't say. Um, it's it's an interesting reason. article. Um, it's an interesting pitch as well for David Leach to take the reins of this movie, which I think um, is a good shout. Yes, Stephen. Obviously, as you did say, he has his roots in the the stunt side of things in movies, and he then made the leap over to directing movies. He, I think, directed Atomic Blonde as well, which was another movie which actually I yeah. really enjoyed. I think yeah, Charlize yeah. Theron was in it with James yep. McAvoy. And it was this great, again, action flick yeah. about espionage missions, I think, going over to, I think it was Eastern Germany, East Berlin, over the Divide, and uh, try to retrieve this, sort of, I think it was a target who was involved with the KGB leaking information. Yeah. And it was a stunning action sequence going down a set of stairs which was just mesmerising. So this guy knows how to shoot an amazing choreographed and slick action movie, which I think is something that's absolutely necessary for yeah. a Blade movie. Yeah. I, I recall the Blade movies from the early 2000s, the late 90s, very fondly. They were great, viscally violent, if I recall mm -hmm. correctly. Quite violent anyway, with yeah. horror elements. But they were very slick, and Wesley Snipes was, a, he was really good in that lead role. So absolutely, yeah. that's something I would be on board for, getting this guy on board. Uh, the fact that he is involved, as you did say, with other projects, so yeah. his timeline, his timetable is going yeah. to be busy up until perhaps we get this movie green-lighted, more of the cast brought through, and maybe it coming into production, then that means he's busy, he's not got any issues to our stumbling blocks yeah. in his way, and he will then, in time, hopefully have a free yeah. timetable yeah. when this movie comes out. It's kind the of Division like, as well, yeah, we're just, excited for that. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, I think as well, John, uh, um, I'm just going off in a... Side issue here with Mahershala Ali being cast in the role. It's something that a few YouTubers picked up on Mahershala Ali's age. Yeah. Um, I think he's in his mid fifties at the moment now. Um, Blade. Um, they've not actually you know announced when Phase Five will take place, and they've not obviously announced when the Blade character will come into Phase Five either. Yeah. Do you think that's going to be an issue with um, his age because yeah. it could be closer to sixty before we actually get to see this? Character. That's absolutely crazy to me, yeah. Stephen. I didn't realise he was that old. He's aging, aging very, very mm -hmm. gracefully. In fact, indeed, as his age, I didn't realise he's forty-five years old. Apparently, so. Was oh, he forty-five? Yeah, he's forty-five. Sorry. Sorry so, yeah, about that. I mean, yeah. 
He's probably about the same age as then, uh, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. When he stepped in, maybe a little older. Who, who is in his mid-50s, yeah. Yeah, um, who was so. in his mid-50s, so he's got a, probably a 10-year span, maybe yeah. a 7, 8-year span. Uh, but although, as you did say, we've not actually got this green lighted and when it's going to no. slip into the obviously what phase and whatnot, you presume it yeah. in phase five. So probably in the next five years or so, three mm. years. I think yeah. phase four's spanning over two years into yeah. 2021. So probably see this maybe early I phase five. Phase, yeah, I think phase two was roughly about the same, John, yeah. um, for time span. But um, I don't think it will be as much of an issue. Um, a few no. YouTubers have obviously voiced their concerns on the casting of that. It's also very unusual that they've they've named the the, the franchise the the film that's going to be uh, in phase five. They've announced the the lead um, actor who's going to be playing Blade, but I don't have a director yet. Yeah, Stephen. I think the primary reason which surprised me was the fact that for that was the fact that Mahershala Ali actually approached Kevin Feige yeah. and Disney himself, uh, and obviously put forward the idea of about doing a Blade movie. He was intrigued by the character. He wanted to get in and get his teeth into it. And then also Kevin Feige's like, when you have a two-time Academy Award winner coming to your door and knocking yeah. it and saying, look, I want to play this character, that's not an opportunity you can knock back. No. So he, you don't slam a door in his face. He, he certainly <laughs> do not, Stephen. So he's come in, he's pitched the idea, they've liked the idea, and now they're going to try and incorporate it into the MCU in some way. And they've done it in a way where they can make this announcement, surprise announcement, yeah. at the end of the panel at Comic-Con. But look, I'm looking forward to the character, I'm looking forward to Mahershala Ali stepping in. I can't lie, in terms of comics, I don't know the also the rich origin of the character, the potential antagonist they can yeah. utilise, who they can get on board, but certainly uh, for a director, I would be over the moon to see David Leach perhaps stepping in, because yeah. he is a guy who has passion for the story, the character, yeah. and he, he's works with some big names, he's been on some big productions now with Hobbs and Shaw, he's getting decent ratings, so he's got that experience, and yeah. he's still a relatively fresh face, so doesn't he do like to give fresh face directors a chance anyway so he fits the bill for me yeah we're going to stay on the MCU John yes. here this is a article coming in from Cinema Blend it's all about Taron Egerton uh, he's down to join the MCU but maybe not as Wolverine now this hasn't actually um, been confirmed or uh, you know disapproved by uh, Marvel this is uh, Taron Egerton speaking um, mm -hmm. I think he's pitched the question if he'd be interested in perhaps um, I think it was um, an interview that was on the red carpet for Variety um, whether he would be interested in some form of a character uh, playing a character in the MCU he says he, he loves Marvel and he loves the movies and uh, he says he'd love the excuse to get in shape yeah. uh, and he'd love to be part of it whether Wolverine's realistic or not I don't know but I'd love to be part of one that's him name dropping there um, I don't know if that'll do him any favours but no. um, Marvel already came out John and says that um, the, the mutants is something that are putting on the back burner um, this was before the Fantastic Four announcement as well yeah. um, so I don't think we're going to be seeing any X-Men mutants whatever you want to call them for a while anyway no um, but what do you think about Taron Egerton coming into the MCU? Do you think there's a, you know, do you think there's a character that he could play? Do you think um, he's one of these guys that's so versatile? Um, a lot of people think, you know, that he's he's this action sort of guy because of the Kingsman films. But I think there's more to him. If you've ever watched that film, uh, Eddie the Eagle, yeah. uh, coincidentally, you know, co-starred with Hugh Jackman and. Um, he's not a Rocket Man as well. Yeah. Um, you can see that he's not just an action guy. Um, he's He's so versatile. I think um, the possibilities for him playing all these varied characters in the MCU, um, I think it's very limitless anyway. Yes, Stephen, the guy has proven himself time and again. He's a sort of a, I always want to say trefect, but I don't think that's the correct term. Yeah. He's like the rounded performer. He can sing, he can dance, he can act. He's got good charisma, Yeah. decent range. He's done a number of different movies, biopics to obviously musical biopic with yeah. Rocketman. He's been in Kingsman, which is another, I think, movie which is based off a run of comics. So certainly, and as you did see, Eddie Eagle as well. So certainly, he is a guy who has the ability to come in and play a superhero character yeah. in a world where it's just, I mean, the possibilities are really yeah. limitless right yeah. now. You have so much history to tap into, so many different runs. We're seeing them tapping into Celestials. Um, they're going to be doing Eternals, sorry. Yeah, Eternals, they're going to be yeah. doing Fantastic Four. Mutants will gradually be phased into the MCU at some point so there really is a limitless yeah. auction well not a limitless there's obviously a limit on there somewhere there's a limit of characters yeah. but it's near limitless 
Uh, in terms of what I like to see him play Wolverine, we both spoke about it before we came on, Stephen. I don't think Wolverine's a character they should be touching for at least another 6 to 8 years, if not more. Mm -hmm. Let also Hugh Jackman's, Jackman's interpretation of the character play out, let people enjoy it and soak it in, and then we can then transition into a new actor playing it. Because if they do it too soon, there's always going to be comparisons between the two performances. Let it wear yeah. off, let them have a time to absorb that character, then we can think about a new turn. I wouldn't want to see Wolverine. I think it's too soon for a mutant spirit to come in anyway. Certainly Kevin Feige seems to agree. He's not one for wanting to bring in any X-Men no. related stuff. Certainly for, I think, Phase 4 anyway. Well, we know it's not Phase 4. But maybe even Phase 5. I think we'll let that breathe. Already in Phase 5, we know we're getting Black Widow. We're going to be getting another Captain Marvel movie. We'll probably get another Ant-Man movie at some point, I'd imagine. Yeah. And then you've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 yeah. and Blade. So there's a sizable amount already. In terms of characters you could play, uh, some people have been saying Brad Braddock, obviously Captain Britain, which I know mm -hmm. Kevin Feige's been dabbling with, I think. Yeah. He's interested in bringing in this British figure. And they're so. planting the seeds as well in Endgame, so um, yeah. that's a possibility, John. Although well, some people are saying perhaps Simon Pegg would be better for that role. But uh, I don't know. The possibilities are there. Yeah, Other people have said the Human Torch. Perhaps I've not cast the Fantastic Four yet, so maybe we could see him coming in in a Fantastic Four. Was the character four. Chris Evans played, wasn't yeah, it? In yeah. The, the, yeah. The rubbish version of Fantastic Four. <laughs> so you could play that. Yeah. Then other people are saying Bobby, aka Iceman. There's a whole different uh, array of possibilities. Yeah. He could can step in as a role. The fact that he's once again opening up to the prospect of stepping into a superhero movie. Once again, just shows you, Stephen, how that genre has developed. Yeah. We are seeing actors from all backgrounds. We were speaking about Angelina Jolie and whatnot. Would these actors, 10 years ago, have been interested in perhaps coming into this genre? I don't know, but it's certainly something that's intriguing them now. So I'm happy to see Tara Negerton coming in. Yeah. I think he's a great actor. An actor that certainly is on Air Marvel's radar is Keanu Reeves, John. Yes. Um, now, there is um, a... You know, a big fan base, uh, certainly from, I think it's um, Bosch Logic, has created mm -hmm. another one of these graphics. This guy, um, I don't know if it's a team or if it's just the one person, uh, but um, I think it may be one certainly guy. do throw up these graphics every now and again. It does get people talking. Yes. Uh, in this sense, uh, I think it's on Twitter they took to, uh, to create this character, Keanu Reeves could look as Marvel's Moon Knight in the MCU now. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Feige is desperate to get this man on board, uh, and quite rightly so. Um, and Boss Logic have obviously added to the you know the argument that uh, they have to find this guy a role very quickly um, while he is um, available. Yes. Um, because he is obviously still committed to the John Wick franchise. Um, how successful Bill and Ted's next film is going to be remains to be seen. Um, whether he's going to be tied into more of them or not. Um, Keanu Reeves as well has just had a successful turn at voice acting in Toy Story 4. You might fancy his chances at more of that as well. Yes. So um, I think that's why Feige has tried to get him in place. He's obviously not wanting to utilise him in a shoehorned way. Yeah. There was, there was, there was, there was <laughs> talk about, obviously, which both of us agreed with, John, um, yeah. this character in the Captain Marvel um, Yon Rog that yeah. also went to uh, uh, yeah went to Jude Law and I'm kind of glad in a way because I think someone like Keanu Reeves I think he should be a sort of a showpiece for the MCU yeah. very much like Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange um, what do you think about this character and would you think this would be the right fit for Keanu Reeves Stephen it's a very intriguing character looking at the character's background the fact that he is involved in this sort of espionage missions and whatnot, yeah. vigilante sorry skilled in hand to hand combat and gadgetry that seems like something that's right up Keanu's street. He's also a guy who's coming from The Matrix and from John Wick, a man who's doing vigilante work, if you could say, a hitman. Yeah. And he's skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat, certainly. He's skilled in a whole array of different combat, including books and guns and whatnot. Yeah. So it seems to be books, yeah. Yeah, the general yeah. fit for the characters there with Keanu. And just the concept of this character, um, being granted powers from an Egyptian moon god, Khonshu, yeah. it's intriguing. The thing that really struck me though, Stephen, is the fact that he eventually goes insane, so it's a complicated character, multi-layered, it's not just an out-and-out -out good guy, bad guy, there's stuff, stuff going in there, and this is something we've seen Marvel ta tackle yeah. um, more recently with the likes of um, Black Panther with yeah. Eric Killmonger, he's a complicated grey villain, Thanos, complicated grey villain, some would say, absolutely crazy, the mad titan, but we could understand why he was doing what he was doing. Yeah. And then, even more recently again, we have 
Mysterio and obviously Spider-Man Far From Home another complicated yeah. villain so if he's coming on board I don't know much about the character I've no. just read about it there certainly it's a very cool looking character something I'd love to see him stepping into just the face and the, also the robe and this yeah. sort of a masking over his head quite ripped though I don't really see Keanu as being a guy who's ripped but they can put a muscle suit on him it's all good uh, but yeah very intriguing character it looks like it could be on a similar vein to Mysterio starts off as a an protagonist a good guy then slowly delves into insanity and becomes the antagonist later on in the movie or a multi-arc story Yeah. and I agree Stephen uh, before I let you back in or perhaps move on that I wouldn't have liked to have seen him shoehorned into mm. a kind of a set dressing role as a side figure in like a Captain no. Marvel movie like Yon Rigg could have lost it then done a great job played yeah. the, sort of a mentor figure it's, uh, obviously set yeah, what was it Danvers or no yeah. what was it Veers sorry Carol Veers, Danvers yeah. Veers she was called because you could only see one little bit of her name tag. Um, he set her on the path to becoming Captain Marvel, then he revealed himself to be an antagonistic figure, similar to this, but I, w- I would like to see any character that Keanu uh, tackles being more uh, bombastic in your face, yeah. a, bit, a bigger I'd role, agree, John. not set dressing that's maybe killed off after one movie. I want to see them tackle more low-key as villains, yeah. try to obviously traverse multiple films and an overarching plot. Yeah, and I think um, this is going to be ongoing, I think, between Kevin Feige and Keanu Reeves over the next, well, I'm saying a few months, I think this is going to go on for a while yet, yeah. um, because, you know, the 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 studio want him badly, you know, they want him in some sort of, you know, way um, that's not going to look forced, and um, I think the opportunities are there now, we're getting into the cosmic sort of side of the MCU now, so it's opening up a mirror of, a, you know, all these cosmic characters anyway yeah. and I can certainly see Keanu Reeves playing that he's played Neo I would say that's sort of semi um, you know mystical anyway yeah. so um, I think he's um, and he's, he's a smart man as well he'll be waiting for the right opportunity I think this would fit as well I like the look of this character I don't know too much about it either John but I Boss think logic though Stephen yeah Jesus Christ think, yeah. once again proves himself Amazing. to be an incredible graphics designer just yeah. that work he's done there Amazing. Yeah. The guy's got his finger on the pulse. Why has a studio not brought this guy in to do posters, promo work, concept art? Or maybe it does, John. Maybe, maybe it does. Boss maybe. Logic name is just an undercover name. Could but, be. Could be. Um, yeah. Listen, we'll could move on, John. This is uh, an yes. article. It's very short and sweet. I think the next three are going to be anyway. Time's pressing here. But this yeah. uh, comes in. It's Milo Ventimiglia. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. He says Warner Brothers called him too old to play the new Batman now um, he's a big fan of the Cape Crusader and he had this to say uh, do I see myself in a cape and a cow Warner Brothers didn't they were looking for a new Batman and they said Ventimiglia is too old um, he didn't take offence to it um, I think he said it's okay it doesn't matter by the way I'm kind of busy it's okay I'm still a fan I've always been a fan of Batman Stephen I don't think again this is much uh, to really discuss in terms no. of just like controversy, this is a shocking thing. No, uh, it's just obviously Matt Reeves has got a yeah. vision for the character. He's perhaps got multi- multiple stories mapped yes. out for the character. Although I do recall, I think one of the Russo saying that he would like to direct a Batman movie at some point. So yeah, perhaps right, yeah. Matt Reeves will kickstart off the story of this younger Batman, also played by Robert Pattinson now, and then other directors will come in and have a little play around in the sandbox yeah. with it and spicing up the ideas. Yeah. Obviously, if he's that's, that's the director's vision. He's wanted to pick perhaps a younger actor. I don't know how young Patterson is. 33. 33, yeah. so he's maybe 10 years younger yeah. than Ventimiglia. So yeah. it's just personal choice, creative decision, where they want to see the character yeah. go, and perhaps they want that stability. I think the longevity of Ben Affleck's Batman wasn't there, John. Yeah. Uh, especially with um, Matt Reeves talking to the studio on his plan and how he wants to you know, flesh out this character and how much... Uh, of a stretch she wants to take this character on in the you know the the DC yeah. universe but I think it's right I think um, I think Robert Pattinson is the right man for the job mm-hmm. um, not just because of his acting but because of his age I think it's going to all these characters that they're talking about now um, in the films that are coming up from DC it could be a, a while after the the Matt Reeves Batman film before we see him again anyway yeah. um, so it's it's probably a wise thing to do that we're getting to see Bruce Wayne in his early 30s and maybe the next time we see him will be in his late 30s. Yeah, Stephen, again, that, that's something I'd love to see. It's just the yeah. longevity of the character. They are probably thinking ahead, thinking we've been stung with the Ben Affleck uh, older, grizzled character. Yeah. Also the complications which have arisen from, or arisen, I should say, from, uh, obviously, issues with the script and 
what not, and then he's progressively older and it's got to the stage where look, we can't really continue on with this character, the scope's not there anymore. Yeah. And then they've also decided, well, we'll adjust that by having a slightly younger actor who can perhaps have greater longevity. But look, I'd like to see this guy coming in and perhaps portraying another character in a superhero movie. He's a good actor. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be adverse to it. What really does interest me, though, Stephen, is the fact that we go further down, just as an aside to this, and we've got Michael Giacchino discussing uh, the movie itself. He's a good friend of Matt Reeves, and he says that what he's seen of the project is pretty darn awesome. So I don't know if he's doing composing work or not, but that, again, just gets my anticipatory juices yeah. flowing for this movie. I cannot wait to see a proper Batman wait. movie again. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people, Stephen. I actually watched um, William Defoe speaking about Robert Pattinson and he was asked what he thought of the casting of obviously him as Batman. He says he's certainly got the jawline for it. A strong chin. He couldn't yeah. imagine a Batman having a, a weak chin. No. People were then saying they'd love to see him. He's been touted as being a joker uh, numerous times over the past. Um, perhaps coming in. I'd love to see him coming in starting alongside Pattinson once again. They're standing together in the lighthouse look like they're locking horns and going mental together on this lighthouse setting. I'd love to see him playing the antagonistic Joker. Get rid of Jared Leto's take. It's god awful. Yeah. Cast that into the dustbin where it belongs. Obviously, let Joaquin Phoenix do his side thing with this Scorsese. I don't think it is his project anymore, but he was involved in some way. And they just let the foe do his thing. I know they think they're talking about Catwoman and the Penguin, but I want to see the Joker at some point yeah. again. Well, listen, John, um, here's, a, here's a man that's not a big fan of the current comic book. A run certainly not Batman v Superman. It's Bruce Campbell who yes. appeared in three Spider-Man films, the Sam Raimi ones. Um, he uh, he's saying that it's a stupid concept, the Batman v Superman film. Um, I've yeah. got to admit, um, I think when this film was announced, I thought it's a hell of a way to introduce your this incarnation of uh, the, the Dark Knight. <laughs> um, with a great setup for the Man of Steel uh, with that first film, the Zack yeah. Snyder film, but. Um, this, um, I, th I think it's actually quite surprising coming from Bruce Campbell, um, who's obviously appeared in th those uh, the Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man trilogy, the Tobey Maguire ones. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, just on the previous topic, when we were talking about Robert Pattinson, Bruce Campbell was actually one of the names that was getting put about for the older Bruce Wayne, when yeah. they were still having that sort of frame of mind. They were still pitching that character as the older one, in the same sort of sense as Ben Affleck's. Bruce Campbell, I thought would have played a good um, Bruce Wayne, but um, it wasn't to be. And after reading this article, it was never going to be because Bruce Campbell thinks it was a stupid concept and he thinks uh, superhero films in general are very much like that as well. What's your thoughts on this, John? Yeah, Stephen, uh, I'm not too surprised to see him perhaps bashing the actual premise of the story itself because this is something which has been done Time and again over the, the last few years since the release of Dawn of Justice, I think we can all agree that it was probably a silly concept in retrospect, obviously yeah. bringing in Batman and having them clash tight in this Titanic clash with Superman. It's a battle we can't win and that's what actually Bruce says in the yeah. statement. It's just a stupid, stupid concept. But Superman can make the world go backwards with central fugal force. Fugal force. He can fly. All he has to do is put one hand on Batman's esophagus and that's the story over. So... He's right, they spent a whole lot of money, too much money, kidding themselves on. Uh, it was something that should never have happened. They no. should have perhaps followed a different route. But again, that was Zack Snyder. I think, I'm pretty sure it was anyway. He had a vision, I think, for the DCEU, which also was flung in the dust dustbin, like I said previously, when he had to go off a personal tragedy. Yeah. And they brought in, uh, I can't even remember who'd done the rest of the movie. I know he was involved in the original Avengers. His name completely eludes me at the moment, but it doesn't matter. Josh Whedon. Josh Whedon. Well, he was more involved in the, the Justice League film, yeah. John, I think. Perhaps yeah, yeah. You, you might be getting mixed up. No, there, no, but, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, the, the overarching yeah. vision for the DCU, it was a stupid idea. Yeah. It completely ruined where they went after that with falsely leading well. Justice League. I don't League. know, the, you know, coming from the studio as well, I think their intent was to really. Um, you know, make a statement to Marvel, yeah. you know, that we've got the, the two biggest uh, superheroes, you know, in our catalogue, and have. we're going to put them up against each other. This, this thing's going to be big, it's going to be major. Um, it wasn't to be. Um, if you've seen the, I can't remember what cut it's called, it's the uh, Ultimate Edition, I yeah, think it's called, something cut, like that. Yeah. yeah, it's actually pretty decent if you've got a lot of time in your hands. It, it runs in over three hours, but it's well worth a watch, John. The pace and everything's more. Um, suited for the storyline and um, there's additional scenes in there that make more sense than the theatrical cut 
But you're right. I think um, putting Superman against anyone, whether it's a villain or a you know a, a, an anti-hero, um, it's not going to work. Especially someone like Batman. You know, mm. he's um, it's, he's more about gadgets and you know uh, detective work. So it didn't really make sense to me. I kind of do agree with Bruce Campbell and what he's saying, but I'm just surprised it's came from Bruce Campbell. Yeah, Stephen, also a guy who actually did say he was involved in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. You should really know better, but look, I don't know if he would have I think he was just helping a friend out there, John. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. But yeah, I mean, I can understand what you're saying as well, Stephen, finally, about superhero movies in general, just the plot holes and whatnot. They can always get around deaths. We've seen it in the MCU. Yeah, it's not James again. Bond, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But I wasn't too worried about the Henry Cavill pothole in the actual Justice League movie, the way they brought back Superman. That was the best scene in the whole movie for me. When he yeah. woke up and was reawakened and he just wrecked every single member of the Justice League for a solid five minutes. That was yeah. beautiful. The best scene in that whole movie, Stephen, was when the Flash actually could see yeah. oh, he could see the Flash from the corner of his eye. That was beautiful. Yeah. So I can understand what he's saying. He's criticising perhaps superficial nature of superhero movies at the time the fact that they can just reverse things like that um, and I can understand the, what he's saying about the movie itself but look that's what it is uh, it's done yeah. it's consigned to history all they can do is move on and give us a better movie in the future and we'll start with Matt Reeves Batman and hopefully if Henry Cavill can't come back we'll get another Superman who will yeah. not clash with Batman and they'll yeah. give them time to breathe and then perhaps we'll get a better Justice League yeah. in 10 years time who knows listen but listen before we move on to Matt Reeves' Batman, we're going to go back to the Justice League. Uh, Kevin Smith says that Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League is real. Studio would be silly not to release it. Now, uh, before I let you in, John, um, I don't really want to get into the whole uh, scenario that uh, you know Snyder was under uh, for personal reasons. Yeah, I've already done that. Him. So, um, what Kevin Smith is actually saying here, um, just a, sort of gist of this article, is that there is a version that exists but um, it's not anything near a DVD release or anything like that. There's a lot of green screening in there, a lot yeah. of uh, visual effects that do not exist. Um, possibility of maybe releasing it as some kind of a documentary sort yeah. of style where Educational. you can fill in the, the sort of the blanks and stuff like that. This actually reminds me of um, there was a, a Richard Donner version of Superman 2 that came out 2006-2007 uh, where they oh, used a oh, lot of the, yeah they he used a it. lot of the um, stock footage that was already shot uh, there's some sort of stand-ins and stuff like that um, but it was more the concept of what could have been I yeah. think this is the sort of thing that Kevin Smith tried to hit home here yeah Stephen uh, basically what you're saying yeah you're absolutely right there's uh, definitely a version of the Snyder Cut in the can but it's not got all the visual effects on it it's very yeah. much green screen heavy and uh, he thinks that basically Warner Brothers don't think the audience in today's day and age would be able to consume it. They wouldn't be interested in it. And he fights back against that by arguing that there is a sizable proportion of DC fans and comic book fans in general who would be intrigued enough on some level to see the Zack Snyder I cut. Would. Yeah. And they would first just forgo all of the green screen. And perhaps if Snyder come in himself and narrate over the, the unfinished elements and say, this is the where we will want to go with the creative decisions, we will want to take the character here, the story here. And he thinks there's a, perhaps a market in there, maybe in, like a, I don't know, an additional featurette or something, yeah. and a, another release of uh, the Justice League where we, people would consume it and watch it in some way. Well, I'm with you, Stephen. I would definitely be interested in watching yeah. it purely to see how these big blockbuster movies are created, um, how you get go from the beaten bones of the actual, obviously, practical shooting on set yeah. before adding all the visual elements onto Even it. Back to the storyboarding, John. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, very interesting. Um, that was very much the, the Donner cut of Superman as well. Um, yeah. I, I've just felt that um, it would have been interesting to see that version in its sort of theatrical way. Unfortunately, yeah. time has passed and you could only work with, with what you've got. I'm not really sure uh, how much you can go back um, and, and recreate a lot with if you've got the, you know, the existing green screen, whether you can actually go in there. Mm. I always, you know, always um, hoped or held hope that they would go back and do that with the prequel trilogy. Everything's on there. blue and green screen to update those imagery. Um, so I don't know whether or not they can do that. I'm not technically, you know, minded that way. I don't really know. I've not got any experience in filmmaking in that sense. So I don't really know if they could go back and, and you know, build from what they've got. I think it's all about the moolah, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, is it financially viable? Will they make money off of it? I would love to see Disney Lucasfilm going back and redoing the 
certainly the, the Attack of the Clones and also the Revenge of the Sith. I'd love to see those two movies being redone. I think elements of Phantom Menace as well, but um, I don't think they would go back and redo all the green screen for this. I don't think there's enough uh, financial reward in it for no. Warner Brothers. But certainly I'd love to see, just for educational purposes alone, what this movie looked like in varying degrees of finishedness, if that's a word. It's a um, good word. Yeah, yeah finishedness. Um, it does say that there's a version though, of The Lord of the Rings. There was a documentary released with The Lord of the Rings with, obviously, Peter Jackson, who essentially took viewers through what it was like to construct a movie of this scale. So it's very yeah. intriguing. I always love watching the Star Wars celebration stuff. The visual, uh, obviously, artists and whatnot from ILM showing you how they pieced together the movie. So on one level, I'd love to see it purely for the story direction of Zack Snyder, where, what he had in mind outside of Joss Whedon's obviously yeah. side tangent things that he was doing. And we also heard about his grander ideas for the DCEU going off with wormholes and whatnot, taking us to post-apocalyptic settings and things. So I'd love to see it, purely yeah. for that alone, but look, it's never going to happen, because mm. Warner Brothers don't think we're, we're interested, they don't think we have the attention span to watch an unfinished movie with the director himself taking us through it piece by piece. So Fair enough. But listen, that just brings us to the end of this week's MB Heroes. We'd just like to thank you once again for joining us. And we will be back again tomorrow with MBA Movie News.